Mike Pacelli here, thanks for tuning in. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of Here Comes the Sun that they did in July and August of 1969. Now, Here Comes the Sun was the last original song of George Harrison's that he presented to the Beatles to record. Um, the early months of 1969 were kind of bad for George Harrison. Uh, he quit the Beatles in January. In February, he had his tonsils removed and was hospitalized for quite a while. And in March, he was busted for a marijuana possession. He hadn't really played the guitar for a few weeks, but uh, in early April, he went over to uh, Eric Clapton's house and George was skipping an Apple business meeting, grabbed one of uh, Eric Clapton's acoustic guitars, and the first thing that came out was Here Comes the Sun. And about the song, George has said, Here Comes the Sun was written at the time when Apple was getting like school, where we had to go and be businessmen. Sign this and sign that. Anyway, it seems as if winter in England goes on forever. By the time spring comes, you really deserve it. So one day I decided I was going to sag off Apple and I went over to Eric Clapton's house. The relief of not having to go and see all those dopey accountants was wonderful. And I walked around the garden with one of Eric's acoustic guitars and wrote, Here Comes the Sun. I finished it later when I was on holiday in Sardinia. The time signature changes in the song could be attributed to George Harrison's love of Indian music, and that winding guitar riff is reminiscent of Cream's song Badge from 1968, a song that George Harrison and Eric Clapton wrote together. So July 7th, they're at EMI Studio 2 uh, without John Lennon. He was recuperating from uh, his recent uh, car accident in Scotland. But at the time, John and George weren't on the best of terms. And it was John Lennon's habit at the time to not play on any of George Harrison's songs. They do 13 takes of the uh, rhythm track, uh, recorded onto an 8-track uh, tape machine, with Paul on bass, Ringo on drums, George on a Gibson J200 capoed at the 7th fret, and George singing a guide vocal. Take 13 was the best, and then George double-tracked his acoustic guitar, which took well over an hour to do. July 8th, uh, Ringo overdubbed the drum fills in the odd time signature uh, section. George played electric guitar through a Leslie speaker, and George re-recorded his lead vocals. Uh, and then Paul and George did the harmony vocals. July 16th, they worked on that odd uh, hand clapping part during the uh, odd time signature section, and George played a harmonium. August 6th, uh, George overdubbed his Telecaster again through a Leslie speaker and a lead guitar part on the bridge, which was never used. On August 11th, George overdubbed more guitar parts, which were never used. Then on August 15th, they uh, recorded the orchestra part, which was uh, eight woodwinds and a nine-piece string section. And those tracks were done on the track where George recorded har his harmonium, so his harmonium part was deleted. August 19th, George overdubbed the uh, Moog synthesizer part with that ribbon controller slide down at the beginning. You hear, Rrr. and then the next day on August 20th, the song was mixed with the tape machine playing a quarter tone faster at uh, 51 hertz, not 50 hertz. So the song is sharp at uh, 51 fiftieths of standard tuning. And for some reason, the orchestra was pretty much uh, buried in the mix. Uh, George recorded three live versions of the song. Uh, with Pete Ham on August 1st, 71 at the concert at Bangladesh, and then on June 5th, 87 at Wembley for the Prince's uh, Trust Rock Gala, and on December 1st and 17th, uh, live in Japan. And Here Comes the Sun was included on the Abbey Road album, which was released on September 26th, 1969. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. George Harrison is playing a Gibson J200 on Here Comes the Sun. This is a Keras SJ number 50. Uh, he's capoed on the uh, seventh fret. So the song is in the key of A. I'll call the chords out how they look in first position. So when you play a D form with a capo on the seventh fret, it sounds A. And to play the intro and the refrain and a verse, you'll need basically a, a, a D chord, an A7, a G form, getting up to a G major 7th, and an E7, and that'll get you through it. George starts on beat 2 with a strum of that D chord, and he plays like this. It's 1.
Now, of note is the way, like on the fourth beat of, of measure two, he starts a strum pattern on that G early. So on beat four of, uh, of uh, measure two, you start like four and. And uh, again, charts and tabs will make it a lot clearer than I'll be able to uh, play it or say it. But, but that's, that's notable right there. So you're playing on beat four of the second measure on the G form. Kind of strumming through. And then like on the, um, uh, on the G major seventh, it's a good idea if you can get first a, a G form and then move your finger up to the uh, major seventh before the A7. Right. Then on the refrain, George plays this. To an E7. Then this cool little form. Basically, you just put your, um, put a finger down, perhaps your second finger, uh, maybe your third finger so you can slide in. But on uh, a fret 10, and an open capo, so you're getting with so and then two uh, pull offs and uh, then a verse will start. So let me play you the intro and the first refrain. Nice and I'll do it a little slower so you can hear it better. Um, one. And you'd be into verse one. Now on the verses, basically, you know, messing around with the, uh, that D and the G, and the verse starts like this. Verse one goes. So of note is on that A7, pick up your third finger. Continuing. Right there, it's just two F sharps. Here comes the sun. And that cool figure, slide into it. Okay, then the second verse is exactly the same, except at the very end, instead of that uh, whole measure, it's a measure of 2-4, and he just holds a, an A7. So uh, after the second verse, it's... Right? And then comes the first bit of the odd time signatures. And the way I like to count it is it's, um, it's like four measures of 3-8, and a measure of two eight. So it's like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and then a measure of four, four, one, two, three, four, and then a measure of two, four. And um, he's leading into, he, he, he does a lead in on first three eight measure. All right? It's kind of a root third fifth of an A chord. Then like an F triad, a C triad, a G over B triad, the lower root third of a G, then into the D, you're in 4-4, four, four. and an A7. So again, I count it 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2. So, um,
happens twice. Then on the third time, he just changes a little bit on the A seventh chord. He plays this on um, the third and the fourth time he plays. Does that again. happens twice. The fifth time, he does a little more strumming on the A7. He plays. All right? And then the last time, he plays. And then this A chord. All right. So how about if I do all that, those three parts nice and slow for you so you can see the odd time signatures. And then we're to the last verse, which is very similar, but let me go through it and I'll show you any, uh, any differences. And it starts like this, let's see. See, make sure you get into that strumming, that up and down strumming on the uh, second measure of that thing, again on the G chord, you know, uh, three, four. Anticipate that D chord, you know. There he um, he uh, suspends that A7 chord instead of going. Instead of going, he goes. All right, and then continuing. Again, down and up and that cool little line. Oh, two, two F sharps. And then three measures of 3-8, a measure of 2-8, and strum that last D chord starting on the fifth string. So I'll do that whole last bit, last verse, and the ending nice and slow for you so you can see how it goes. And it goes like this. Three, four.
Again, charts and tabs will make it much clearer than I can play it or say it, but those are all the parts George did on acoustic guitar on Here Comes the Sun. George Harrison doubled some of the parts that he played on his acoustic guitar, uh, this time on his Fender Telecaster, still capoed on the 7th fret, and he's playing it through a uh, Leslie speaker cabinet. Uh, the first time you hear the double track is on the, uh, in the refrain where he plays the signature riff, and you hear this on electric also. And then on um, measure 10 of the verse, you'll hear um, one. G chord, and then at the end of the uh, verse, you'll hear he plays again the signature riff. Um, do, do, do. Nearly exactly the same on verse two, except he adds the E7. So when it comes to that, that little line on measure 10 of verse two, one. Also plays the E7 and then the signature riff. Right? Then on the odd meter things, the 3 8, the four measures of 3 8, measures of 2 8, he plays on all those measures, but he doesn't play on the 4 4 or the 2 4 measures. And this happens, what, six times? So six times George would go. <laughs> Three, four, one, two. Two, 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 three, four, one, two. I think that was five. And then on the sixth time, he plays again, and he'll play on that A7 build-up thing where he goes, it comes on the A7, uh, three, four. Then on the last verse, George plays, um, what is it, measure four. He goes, um, the little... And then next time you'll play, you just hear him going um, one, just that, and then the signature riff. Do, 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 do. And then the signature riff will happen two more times. Two, three, four. And the last time he plays that D note, the first note of his acoustic is an F, so it almost makes a little D minor sound for a second, right to the very end. Charts and tabs at MikePicelli.com will make it a lot clearer than I can say it or play it, but uh, I have put it together in a sound alike, so you can also see how both guitar parts fit together. So have a look at this.
gotta admit that's some very tasty guitar playing by a 26 year old George Harrison back in 1969. If you'd like to know the parts exactly you can download the charts and tabs at mikepacelli.com and I really really appreciate your consideration in supporting my work that way. And please if you haven't do subscribe to my channel because that moves me up in the YouTube queue. So have fun playing this great old song and until next time I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me.